Let's bring out uh, the filmmaker, director, and actor, Ross Partridge, and his star, leading lady, uh, Una Lawrence, from the film. Lamb. Hey, guys. Hi, Una. Nice to meet you. <sighs> well, <laughs> hi. I, hi. I can actually say that I was at the world premiere, by the way, just getting that out of the way. I was at the world premiere. You were at South, South by, by and Yeah. In the US. Hello, hello. Yep. Uh, You're and, there. Uh, Una uh, wasn't, unfortunately. You were not there. She, she was working, as she always is. So. Oh, right. Yeah. We'll get to all that. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have a major movie star on the panel tonight. So <laughs> we do. Um, so let's first of all give a little bit. We saw the trailer, obviously, but we want to also know a little bit of the law. This is the backstory of the film uh, or the synopsis. Um, do you want, want to do that, um, Ross? Or? Sure. Do you want to do it? Or, oh, no, Una, yeah. you could do that, too. Um, <clears throat> Lamb was a, it was based on a, a novel by Bonnie Nazam, which you saw there. Um, it, it's basically about two very lonely individuals who are kind of at a point in their lives at a crossroads where each of them are drifting and kind of disconnected to the world. Um, and they randomly meet in a parking lot one day and they decide to embark upon a, a into a ro on a road trip together into the, the great outdoors and to experience. Uh, things that David Lamb, the main character, thinks will actually influence and better both enrich their lives. Uh, the only caveat is is that because of his own psychological oddities and his own troubled past, nobody knows that they're on this road trip. And so you have a very unlikely friendship and union between these two people, and it's, it's, it's really just a... Um, it's kind of a love story, you know, and it's not a, a, a love story in a way that you would think a romantic love story. It's, it's basically two people who are in search of love that they never were able to get when they were young and when it mattered most and how that affected and will affect every thing that they do and every action they have from there on out. Uh, how, did, how did, Una, how did the story come to, to you? How well, did you find out about it? Um, yeah, I did the audition. I th actually, I think I missed the audition because, I mean, my parents and I weren't exactly sure about the script, but like, but then I think my mom read it and she was like really, really deeply moved about it and wasn't just like looking at it just from like, like a very outside perspective, but was really, really thinking about it. And when you really uncover the script, I think it was, I think it really, it has a lot of deeper meaning than just like seeing it on the outside. And I think my mom recognized that. And yeah, I did the audition and then I did a callback. And yeah, and when I got it, I was like, yeah, let's do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you did do this thing. Uh, well, did, so were you, when you were sit, talking about your mom's reaction, were you s kind of just saying that uh, uh, she wasn't looking at it like commercially, but she was yeah. responding to it completely on, emo on an emotional level. Exactly, yeah. And did you form your own emotional c connection before you started the movie? Is it, or did you have conversations with, with Ross? Yeah, yeah, we had like, I think we had like a week of like week. rehearsal, yeah. like yeah. like period. And it was, I think that was really, really helpful because we would just have like, I mean, we went over the script, of course, but at the same time, we also really, really talked about it and talked about the characters, and and I think that was really, really helpful. And it come to, it uncovered like a lot of like mysteries for mm -hmm. me um, about like the character and the story. So yeah, that was really, really helpful. And then yeah, so when we finally did start shooting it, um, yeah, I was we were totally ready, and yeah, it was great. Ross, did you have concerns about? Well, I'm certain you had concerns about selecting the, the just the right actress to play uh, Tommy, but did you also just have concerns about uh, those conversations and the and sure and you know uh, it's intense. It yeah, it's 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 hard subject matter. It's it's place you know it's things that uh, most people don't feel comfortable because it's it's like what Una said. It goes beyond what is apparent and what is the you know. You know our experiences dictate how we want to judge something, and yet if you go further and realize the experiences of this character, you have to kind of find empathy in a way that you won't, wouldn't normally uh, tend to find. And so when I was look, looking you know, for somebody to play Tommy, it was, 
we were in the fortunate position of being so low budget, if I can say that as something that's so fortunate, uh, that we knew that if we didn't find the right person to play the part, that we wouldn't embark on this journey. And, and, it, and it was not only Una, because she, she was amazing, but it also had a lot to do with her family and her parents and her, like she said, her mother and, and how she responded to it and how they felt when we sat down and talked about this experience because that was a huge concern for me. You know, I needed all of them to be on board and understand it the way I understood it, or it would have been a really, it would have been a harder thing to have made. And we had that, and, and thanks to her mother, and, and it, it became very simple and easy. But beyond all that, Una, you know, she's magic, and she's an, a magical uh, actress, and not, f somebody who is 11 years old at the time that we shot this. You're 13 now? 12? Yep, 13. Um, but this performance to me is, is for somebody who is of any age. Is, this is an incredibly demanding and challenging role and she just is, is an incredible actress. So. Well, the, the, we're going to go to a clip in a second. Well, but I have one more question at first. Uh, uh, we already said that the two, are, the first part of this is uh, like, it's kind of a road movie almost, right? Because you guys are on the road and driving to this house that's in your family, right? Uh, that's in David Lamb's family. Uh, and, and then the second part is, is, is on the land, on this land. It's beautiful, as you saw. Um, but so we know that a little bit that the... the, the um, complex subject matter uh, and just a man, a grown man having a friendship or a, an intimate or emotional relationship with a young girl uh, who's not related to him. But what was your comfort level and uh, talk about your own uh, process around this character and well, I think it versus was, what your choices you would make as a grown man? Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Um, I, you know, when I looked at it, and as Una said, you, you kind of, when I read the book, I couldn't, I was compelled by it and I couldn't figure out what kept me thinking about this and why I was drawn to the tragedy of this human being. And it's a very, it's an it's a incredibly psychological journey and, and his, the depth of this, you know, the reward of this movie for some, you know, is that you have to kind of experience the, the actions based on things that are uh, his troubled past. And you don't really understand that troubled past until you get to the end of this journey. And when I thought about that, um, it just, to me, just rang reminiscent of, of kind of how life works. You know, we, we look at certain things and uh, we are all flawed human beings, uh, I, I, I like to think. And, you know, uh, when you look, you know, some, some people's choices are different than others. and does that negate who they are as human beings or what they're trying to achieve in life? And yet some people fall through the cracks because they don't have the capabilities of, of getting to a, a, a better place or getting to a, a, a becoming a person that they really want to become, but they just don't have the tools in order to get there. And that was what was interesting. It was like a, to watch somebody who's so flawed make really wrong decisions and yet he had this beautiful, and especially in the book, he has this beautiful language and beautiful poetry about the things that he dreamt about were spectacular and the things that he really wanted to do, but he just had no idea how to get there. And I, and I can relate as far as we all feel that way. I think we're always grasping. We're always feeling, you know, at times disconnected to, the, to the, that beautiful rainbow or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it was very, it became uncomfortable at times trying to like break it down. Why am I telling this story? But shit, love is complicated, and I think that that's worth exploring. Let's look at, let's, let's look at a clip. Okay, Una, I'm gonna toss a few descriptive words, and you just tell me which one describes Ross as a director. Okay, whichever, uh, don't, okay, don't, all right. Uh, tyrant would be number one, tyrant. Okay, number two, um, uh, dictator. Okay. Uh, number three, monster. Now, don't feel nervous because he's sitting next to you. Just speak, speak honestly. Okay. Just you those gave, three? That's it? Yeah, you gave me really hard choices, man. <laughs> like, 
No, what is he? What what is, what is we know what he's like as but so, as an actor, but what is he like as a director on the set, like when you're shooting, when he's wearing the director's hat? Okay, using only those words. Uh, I was kidding. You can fill okay. in. You can. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> She's. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I think what I really really like, like about Ross, like as an, a director, I think, I think he really treats me as an equal because I feel like I feel like some directors may look down upon kids and like even though I'm much shorter than him it's like we're almost like we're the same like he he really like values my opinions and we really and we like it's like it doesn't age doesn't even matter so I think it's really really nice that like I have someone that like like really values my opinions and like gives me like really clear like directions but at the same time lets me do whatever I want with it and I think I think that was what was really really great about it oh well, how does that feel thank you or, what do you think how does that feel um, Ross because she's always right and her <laughs> opinions are really amazing um, yeah you know this was a a lot of people ask me why you know uh, did I choose immediately to play this this part, as, you know, knowing that I was going to direct it? And there was something that was very important for the process was that, you know, hoping that we would create an intimacy, which we we luckily got to achieve when we were in rehearsal with your dad and you and I, and trying to talk about this this psychological world. Um, but it was it was how do we achieve? You know, if, if somebody else played the part, then I would have to hope that we could have the intimacy that I could have with Una as a, as a director and actor trying to talk to one another in a very difficult situation. But then also another actor involved would have to then as well have that same kind of connection. And that's a, that's a big risk to take, and knowing that both parties would have to be, you know, adhere to Una and they'd have to get along and so forth and so on. So not that there's anything about this child would be difficult to get along or or you wouldn't I mean you'd have to be a fool not to listen to somebody who has instincts like like Una as far as an actor it's it's rare when I met Una the first time or the second time when we kind of went for coffee we all sat around and, and t I talked with her parents and Una pulled her book out of her book bag and just sat there started reading and could have cared less about what we had to say at that point only because she had homework to do and, you know, she is, again, I think I was saying to this to, uh, saying to somebody earlier today on in an interview, you know, it's magical to find a kid who is so comfortable with themselves. It's, it's magical enough to find a, an actress or an actor who is so secure. And as soon as I met Una, it was like, this is a, an individual. Immediately, we all felt that she knows who she is already at such a young age and, you know, you have to listen to somebody like that. You, you mentioned a, a little bit before that um, you knew you were going to direct this. Uh, I, I know, I read that you uh, found the book and you felt compelled. You, you even mentioned that before, that you felt very compelled by it. Did you know that this was something you, you were going to direct? Um, or did you ever consider bringing in a, 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 another person to direct? Yeah, I, I knew per right away that this was... I wasn't sure if I was going to actually play the... the the main character, but I knew as soon as I read it that I wanted to make it. I couldn't figure out why, and I, I went back and gave the book to my now fiance, but who's also one of the producers on it, and, and said, you have to read this. I think I want to tell this story, but I, I might be crazy. I'm not sure, but, and she, Jen read it, and uh, she took like three hours. She read the book and then came back to me and said, you know, you have to do this. So to flip it, did you, you said, also, you weren't sure you were going to play the part of David Lamb. Did you think of uh, seriously about casting somebody? As soon as I had to think about casting somebody, I kind of knew that I would play it. But you know, it, as soon as yeah. I got the right, I was like, you know, and I worked with a, a person who was going to finance the film, and we talked about it briefly. Um, mm -hmm. It was more just like going through the steps of cr creating the script first, and then we'll take it from there. And then as I was getting into the world of the script and thinking about it from a director's point of view, it felt like this is going to be too much of a cha you know it's too challenging to to try to accomplish what i just talked about both ways so it right. felt much safer knowing that like okay i'm going to be able to communicate this much easier sure. right you can you it's know. a much more controlled yeah and you know like and it was a tiny movie we were you know our crew is 12 people so that's 
you know, one person per department, which is almost impossible to try to make a movie that way. Uh, we're going to go to questions in a bit, but uh, Una, um, this was obviously it's a, a, a film intended for a mature audience. Uh, you've made a couple of other films, and you're about to make a couple of f uh, films. I'm wondering, which do you have a preference over uh, movies that are for like all, like your friends could see and your peers, or do you prefer a, a film like Lamb, which is you know more mature? I mean, honestly, it Please. doesn't really matter to me because I think as long as the movie like really leaves someone like thinking about something and doesn't doesn't just like last with them for like a day, I think I really want to like impact people and I think it doesn't really matter whether it's a children's film or it's an adult film. And for me, I think I like both equally. And I th I mean, it is nice when my friends can go see it. I mean, I don't like telling my friends that, no, you can't go see it, it's way too inappropriate. But like, I, I, I think it's, um, I, yeah, I yeah. think I like it, but I, I really like both, as, as long as like, they really have some meaning in them and like, really leave you thinking about something, I think that's really all that matters to me. Well, that's correct, that's the correct answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it starts. It's kind of got a number of things going on there. It's like a, th it's almost like a thriller at times. It can get very. I mean, it, it scary. It's it's a psychological thriller. It, not a lot happens, but uh, the psychological, yeah, set piece of it all is pretty pretty big. So, um, yeah. Uh, think of questions that you, if you have any questions or comments for these guys. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hands. Mic. The whole, like the Michael Jackson story, for instance, with all his money and this and that, he, he felt like he never had a chance to be a child. And that was something that haunted him and eventually led to maybe his demise. So in looking at this, I don't know the entire story, but they say that you cannot skip over parts of your life because you will not develop. But as an adult in this story, was that kind of like part of it? Uh, of uh, that these segments of a person's life cannot, or did you approach it from a different point of view? No, I, I think it, it, it is exactly that. I think that... Uh, That's a great question. He, he was basically, you know, uh, stumped by, by certain traumatic events of his youth that he, he became a, a, a very a manipulative human being who spun a great tale and, and weaved many tales because of the incidents that happened as a kid. Sometimes those occurrences turn you into different things. You, you, you've, that because of that need, you, you know, the, look, I, I've been around uh, numerous alcoholics in my life and it's all usually based on something that has, has happened to them, occurred to them as a kid, or whether it's been, you know, they, it's hereditary, or what, you know, you can make that argument. And the kind of chaos that they create in their life, for, in my personal connection to these human beings, was that because of, of incidents that happened to them. And yeah, you can, us looking at that and say, well, you can't live your life completely like that because you become an adult and you should know right from wrong, and yet, People make mistakes all the time, and people do things that, for us, is is we can't comprehend. Why? Why do people? Because we have to look closer. What What is their experience? What is their past that is is putting them into that situation that actually makes that a logical choice for them? And it's easy for us to say, "Well, you know, shit, come on, get with it, man." But we don't. And there's, I mean, we can we could go across the gamut of, of people, you know, how we look at the world and people making decisions, choices all the time, and doing things to other human beings all the time, because of their experience, not ours. So, unfortunately, I think that that there is an element of people and and people who fall through the cracks, based on those very fundamental things that cause you to grow in life and become healthy or not. He does bring up a good point, though, because uh, <clears throat> uh, th I had that sense when I was watching the, the movie as well the first time, uh, that it is though he stopped growing emotionally, he was stunted at a certain point, 
and he, the rest is sort of artifice. Like he's learned how to exist in the world as an adult by obs observing behavior, but it wasn't necessarily his instincts, you know? Yeah. He struggled with that. It felt like that. Yeah, and, and even the author of the book, uh, she made it very clear, which was harder to, to create cinematically because we just don't have the time, but um, that he was never, and it says it in that passage, that he was never, he, he didn't belong to the right era in time, that he always believed he was part of another era. He listened to old, like, Bobby Vinton, and he, there's even a scene in the movie where he places a penny on the young girl's head, and, and he says, here, the year I was born is now on your head. And in the book, it's actually not the actual correct year that he was born. It was 15 years prior. And it's the same that goes on later on in the, in the, in the story and in the film where he says to you, you know, he says to Tommy, promise me one thing, promise me you will always call me Gary, which is a, a fictitious name that he has chosen to take on a different identity of anybody other than himself because in his life, all he really wants to do is be anybody that, other than who he is. And this is the only way he knows how to get it closer to it, which is, you know, it's, look, it's a, it's a sad story. It's, but I, I don't think that because it's a sad story, it's not a story worth telling. I think these type of stories are, create a conversation and they invoke some sort of empathy in a, in a way that we, you know, sometimes have to look a little bit differently and look a, a little bit closer at things. Um, so, Una, uh, how did you start acting and, uh, do you have role models that you, either adult or other kids? And uh, what made you decide to, dr drawing the line between acting and directing? For Ross, uh, what, uh, wh where, do you, where, do, where do you decide when you want to act and when you want to direct or when you prefer having somebody else direct you? Okay. Um, well, I started acting um, actually when I was like five I think because my dad he's um he made this experimental film and I was the main character in that and it was yeah it was really just like about our life and I think that started I think because we were actually recreating some of the scenes from my like life when I was like a kid so I think that kind of started me like like really liking the idea of like you know, recreating something or stepping into someone else's shoes. So I did a few summer acting classes and I loved it. And then I met my manager here, Kim. And um, yeah, and I've just been auditioning and doing films since then. And I really, really love it. So yeah. Well, well since you brought it up, what, what, what do you, you have a uh, Pete's Dragon? Yeah. I Pete's Dragon. Pete's Dragon. Um, and then Which is with David, David Lowry, the direct, yeah. great David director. David Lowry, yeah. uh, yeah. Ain't the Body Saints, right? You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few years ago? Yeah. Anything else? Um, well, Southpaw, which um, was just came this, out recently. Yeah, in the summer, and then um, there's this new movie called Bad Moms that I'm going to be in. Sounds like a comedy. Yeah, it is a comedy. Are you gonna? <laughs> you're stretching. <laughs> you're st <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. But, uh, okay. Uh, oh, you want to uh, answer Part B? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I mean. Is this your first feature you directed? I, I directed a feature about 15 years ago. And, really? And even more now. And I, it, was, it was my film school. It was something that I, I don't talk about much because it, just, it was one of those things where you go out and, ah, yeah, I'll just go out and do this. And I got money and we did it. And, and then you look at it and you're like, oh, Jesus. You know, next time around, I want to be a little bit more cautious about what I'm doing. And, and so it took me a while to actually f figure out how I wanted to go about it and what I wanted to do. So... Um, as far as like, the acting, uh, you, you know, I'm still in a position where you have to kind of do what comes along most of the time and try to get jobs in order to be able to go make a movie like this. And I certainly hope to, to keep directing more, uh, you know, as you, as you get older. I think it's, it's, a, it's a, they're both rewarding experiences and they're both very different. And yeah. It sounds like the way you describe it almost that you work, uh, you act to, in order to direct though. Is that, is that, is I feel like it's, what it's, I'm picking up? I mean, I, I, I've only directed another film in so long, so, uh, and I've been acting in more, but uh, I, I'm really excited about doing the next film as a director and, and not being in it actually. Some of my, you know, my, my favorite moments in making this were the days that I didn't, ha there was one day actually that I wasn't, uh, called as an actor so it was those were the that was the rewarding day of it all but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, any other any other questions? Just a question for Ross. Uh, how hard was it to get a budget? Um, Raising the money. Yeah. yeah, getting the money to, to make a film like this. I actually just had a, an amazing investor who was a friend of a friend, and we'd been talking about doing something together for a while. So, uh, you know, look, we didn't make this movie for a lot of money, you know, or by any standards, any amount of money. <laughs> it, it was, I mean, it's not nothing, but it could be the price of a car, you know, well, a hopefully nobody notices, car, but, uh, though, but nobody notices. That's the, the no, biggest I, compliment you could get, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, no, I think at the end of the day, nobody realizes how, you know, that we made this movie with 12 people, you know, that's on, in 18 days, and that's a, that's a, it's a tough task. So uh, the money just came together through mutual friends and so forth and so on, and we were very lucky to have one financer who just really believed in it and just wanted us to make it, and it was a fantastic experience that way. Hey, I have a question for Ross. Um, you said it took 12 people to make the film. I was just wondering uh, which department had most people and if you omitted any departments at all. Well, we, uh, certainly we combined departments. You know, we had literally, I think there was three people who were doing three different jobs. You know, obviously there was somebody doing locations, co-producing, uh, helping out in craft service, and then we had somebody who was doing costume uh, even our hair and makeup, uh, we had one person doing hair and makeup. Uh, you know, it's just for Una, really. I don't, I didn't need you wear hats. Stuff. Yeah, they just like look like, <laughs> you know, and go. But uh, I, you know, it. I think the can You know, you can't really skimp on certain departments like the camera department. You need you need assistance and you need. But we only had you know, we had one AC and then somebody who was a camera intern who just came out and worked for free and then became you know literally. We, we cut a deal with a camera company in Seattle and we needed somebody to drive the camera to Denver, Colorado. And literally through Facebook, through somebody I had met many years ago who was like, you know, one day I'm, I'm moving to Seattle and I'd love to get in the film business. And it was literally years later, I just randomly emailed him and said, hey, we're doing this film. Would you be interested? And he wrote back, and he ended up driving our cube truck from Seattle, the, his first job, all the way t to to Colorado, nonstop in like you know 17 hours, and then stayed and became such a vital part of the uh, of the process. So that's what happens in independent film. You get great people who are just really believe in it and and are willing to go to all lengths to to, to make it happen. So. Ross Partridge, everybody, and Una Lawrence, please. A nice one more round of applause. Thank you, guys. And thank you for coming out to thank the you. Apple Talks here at the Apple Store. So thank you very much. Thank you.